Hey there, you salty little cracker. Have you ever seen the television program The Wild Thornberries? I never liked the show because it sucked, but as a Nickelodeon employee, I certainly wasn't part of the target audience. Whoever that was. Some dumb shits. Featuring the annex of Eliza Thornberry, a little girl who talked to animals, much like your sister, the show lasted for five seasons. Five long, grueling, depressing, disappointing... Well, I'm less than enthusiastic about it. Anyway, while the acting and direction were just scrumptious, I personally felt that the show never really did much except fill time between the more popular and preferred Nickelodeon television shows like Spongebob and Salute Your Shorts and The Rugrats. A lot of strange changes happened to the show, and honestly, something took a strange turn for the worse years after the original pilot intro aired. It was around the season three, when the show pretty much developed into the shit it was. Low-budget animation shtick about a girl and her family that went on adventures as makeshift documentary filmmakers. Snuff. I worked for Nickelodeon. I was pretty big in the company. I was jokingly approved as the seal of approval guy. See, what a lot of people don't know is that hundreds of episodes never make the cut for television audiences. We'd often outsource our animation to writing to countries like Korea and SeaWorld employees. But one day, a very, very odd episode appeared on my desk. There was no title. It was blank. I'm not so sure who sent it to me. It was disturbing. Who would send me such a tape? Me, of all people. Well, as it turns out, nobody at Nickelodeon would send a VHS, as we had DVD technology even back then. But a sticky note near my desk that read, From the Parent Company, was written in Sharpie in handwriting that I wasn't familiar with. Well, it made sense. From the Parent Company? Who'd be proud to give out their name and admit they were that parent? Something strange was going on. Someone had written, Take it, you concubine, on the back of the sticky note with a sharpie. And that was all I ever learned before they fired me. I was in the office with Mr. Hefferman that day. He insisted on me reviewing anything that showed up on the desk. I dusted off the VHS player, inserted the VHS, and pressed play. Big mistake. I should have quit immediately after getting that weird note in VHS, but... Some people never learn, and I'm so smart that I ran out of memory. The intro was the same. Every episode started with some exposition. This is me, Eliza, part of your average family. I've got a dad, a mom, and a sister, but something amazing happened, and now I can talk to animals. It's really cool, but totally secret. Click. Eh, the tape clipped a little, and the episode just started as she was talking to turtles. Talking to turtles. Fucking bitch. I took out my notepad and began sipping an ice cold slushy. One that was starting to melt. Not unlike my sanity would soon melt. Well, Nigel Thornberry looked very disheveled. The episode focused a lot more on Nigel Thornberry and his personal issues. We just see a silhouette of him and he's yelling. It was really loud. I had to lower the volume. I want a divorce. I presume that this was his wife, or Marianne, as the fucking developers called her. I'm sick of these fucking animals. Our daughters have scabs and lesions and ticks. You hear Nigel yelling angrily. I made you sausages, prick. Well, there was some talking. I had to rewind to listen carefully. Um, it was very audibly indescript, you see. I just want a normal life, a normal family, not forcing our children to go on African adventures with a fucking chimpanzee. I want a car, a house, a dog. I just want a normal life. The sound of a gunshot or a door slamming was heard. It was almost inaudible. The screen got very grainy, and for the entire animation duration, only the porthole window on a boat had been seen. Well, this was disturbing and low budget even for Nickelodeon. The show was already recorded on a shoestring budget. 
That's why such a mediocre show ever made it past me. The seal of approval? Man. I thought I was a top dog. I thought I was a professional. I thought I had a reason to persist. <laughs> but then it happened. This is me, Eliza, part of your average family. I've got a dad, a mom, and a sister, but something amazing happened. And now I talk to animals. Well, she was talking to an antelope while the antelope just stood there not talking back. Kind of a what the fuck is wrong with you look in its eyes. Couldn't blame it. It was a normally rendered antelope, not a highly animated one. The antelope couldn't talk. What the fuck was going on? What the fuck was Nickelodeon Studios planning? That was when the monkey, which I found out was named Darwin, came out. I suddenly became very angry. Darwin should be a fish. What was Darwin's theory of evolution doing in a show for children? It was just a coincidence. Today, I'll never know. Nigel Thornberry decided to take the family to a McDonald's in Africa. His wife was nowhere to be seen. Eat your cannibal sandwich. He had a crooked nose and a bushy orange mustache rendered in highly graphic detail. He was disheveled, and the jewel-eyed miscreants were hungrily scarfing down their... Um, ants and coconut milk? What happened next seriously concerned me, and I swear to the good one above, it's all real and it happened. Eliza Thornberry started talking to the ants. Do you want a French fry? What? They sprayed insecticide on you? Nigel Thornberry suddenly looked very angry. Why is my daughter talking to fucking ants? He got pissed off and called 911. She was still talking to the ants. The French friars are going to fry you? Nigel Thornberry grabbed her arm and dragged her outside where an ambulance was waiting. He looked very, very angry. My daughter has schizophrenia. She has voices. I mean, it made sense. All that time alone in the African savanna with the family denying her normal social interactions with her peers. May I remind you this was a Nickelodeon show. I sighed as the film clipped again, but with my face in my palm, I heard the narration again. This is me, Eliza, part of your average mental asylum. I've got a dad, a mom, and a sister, but something amazing happened, and now I can talk to Shampoo. Indeed, Eliza was in a padded cell talking to shampoo the shampoo just sat there barely animated it was a single frame painted into the background what she said the soap is harassing you nigel thornberry looked really pissed off he had bloodshot eyes and it looked like a vein was about to pop out of his neck my parents he started my parents hunted lions and my daughter talks to fucking soap He took out his elephant gun. And who could blame him? I shut the tape off. I didn't want to watch some show where a girl talks to fucking soap. I made several notes about how a child talking to soap wasn't smart, intelligent, or even vaguely interesting. As I went to shut the tape off, I suddenly hesitated as Nigel Thornberry abruptly started to scream. A lot of people misunderstand how soap works. He said, A lot of people assume that the soap is just there to smell nice, but actually there are tiny machine elves working off at time to improve your bodily odor, cleaning your interiors with their sparkling magic elf teeth, and nothing is ever really clean or real, everything is dirty and broken, but nothing's going to clean your soul. Click. That was when my phone rang, and I assumed it was just my boss or another Nickelodeon employee as I was in my office on the slush. He was starting to melt into a puddle high fructose and perspiration. When I picked up the phone, I became very, very angry. It appeared someone was playing a prank on me. 
Now, nah, this is me, your boss, part of your average employees. I've got a janitor, an HR executive, and your sister, but something amazing happened, and now I can talk to shitty employees. Oh, fuck him. I slammed the phone down angrily and stormed into the boss's office. His door was locked, and the employee comment card box was open. Oh, I was concerned, to say the least. I opened the employee comment card box to find... Oh, another VHS. The fuck? It was the same episode, I think, but part two was written in Sharpie. Honestly, the last video was only five minutes, so it didn't need to have a second part on a different VHS. VHSs were designed to hold entire films. Not some weird lost episode where the kid was talking to fucking ants. I went back to my office and put the tape in, uh, but someone had shoved strawberry jam into the VHS tape player. A saboteur. Someone trying to take my job? Ants were all over. Red fire ants trying to eat the jelly jam. I shoved the VHS in there and it played, but barely. Nigel Thornberry was eating a delicious jam sandwich on toast while the severed heads of the other cast members sat above the mantle. I must say, I truly enjoy a good crust. I, I squinted. That, that, that wasn't a joke. He was just eating the crust. That wasn't a joke. Then he started to talk. This is me, Nigel Thornberry, part of your average hunters. I've killed your dad, your mom, and your sister. There's a severed head. I found it in Darwin. He's a lie. Everyone knows natural selection is the truth. Oh, yeah, about my house is full of dead people. Because they piss me off because I piss me off. You see, I host this nature show. And my wife's severed head shoots it. But something amazing happened, and our daughter has schizophrenia. It's really unfortunate, but totally secret. And you know what? Life's never been the same. Hmm. He takes out a gun and shoots himself in the head, and the show just cuts straight to the silent credits. I immediately got an email saying that uh, I was fired, and to remove my sandwich from the employee fridge. Upon approaching the fridge, I found out that someone had unplugged it. And the ants were feasting on my sandwich. Oh, I got really angry now. Murderously angry. It's enough to lose your job, but to take another employee's sandwich? I was very, very angry. And I felt the need to complain to one of the higher-ups. You know, the, the, those guys that twiddle their thumbs and masticate the Japanese-drawn cartoons. There was another sandwich there, a wild thornberry sandwich. All right, I, I unwrapped the mysterious lunch selection and I took a bite. That was when the ant started to talk. It was barely audible, but a whisper. They stole your job, the ants whispered. Ants don't talk. What was this? Uh, th th that was when the dishwasher started to talk as well. What do you mean everything talks? The universe is just a slow vibration, and all consciousness is subjective, you know. Everything's alive and well, and in you. I picked up a napkin to clean jam crust off my mouth, and it started to scream. The napkin was bleeding, and it began to cry. I can't go back to work now. I can't live a normal life. Every time I inhale, I'm committing genocide on bacteria. The universe is fine-tuned. The universe is fine-tuned to piss you off. God's a real prankster. I mean he or she or it set up this whole universe just to piss you off. Kill yourself, the mustard hissed. Mustard's not an animal. Mustard's not an animal at all. I guess I gave in. Nickelodeon won. I didn't know what I was talking about. You can't draw this. You can't draw <clears throat> indescribable pain. You can't draw this. As for me, I'm a unicorn caretaker now. I take my job very, very seriously. If you cross me, I shall strike you down and break you and burn you. And I will ensure that not a microscopic piece of you remains. There will be no funeral, no eulogy, no reference to you. Not even an urn to hold your remains. 
and I'll break those pieces into smaller pieces until not even the very idea of you can exist much more than the vague recollection of a thing that may have happened in someone's mind somewhere, and nary a fool with a twinkle in his eye would dream that your existence ever was or is anything, as you are just the idea of something, and that idea is no more. A voice in someone's head, an imprint, and everyone will tell everyone else that the voice isn't real, that you are not real. And in that final moment where what is left of your being is dispelled through therapy and medication, that last bastion of being locked in the subconscious of someone else and slowly pushed back until one thread remains. And I will cut that thread, and you will cease to be no longer, for being is a state reserved for things, and you are no such. Not even a memory of a dream within a dream. Nothing. This is me, part of your average employees. I've got a car, a house, and a dishwasher. They're dead ants, we found them. And a dead sandwich, he found us. Oh yeah, about your, about your office, our office, it, it moves because we are fired all over the world. You see, my animator hosts this nature show and my director shoots it. Okay, so we're not that average. And between you and me, something amazing happened. And now I can talk to sandwiches. It's really cool, not, not, but but not, but totally secret. And you know what? I'm in your fucking house right now.